Take a moment and imagine what might make your phone more secure than a password or fingerprint scan. What if your phone is able to identify you by your DNA? What technologies may, in the future, enable this? Previously, we covered what is DNA. How then do we know the exact sequence and by what means? This is where DNA sequencing comes in, a process of determining the number and precise order of nucleotides of our genome. The human genome as a whole is about 3 billion base pairs long. That's right, it's a 3, with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 zeros behind. It's a really huge number that cannot be determined in a single sequencing read. In digital storage terms, it's 3 gigabytes. Can you imagine reading an ebook that is 3 GB in size? How will you attempt to decode such a massive sequence? Scientists overcome this problem by breaking the multiple copies of the genome into small chunks randomly, usually by sonification, in what is called the shotgun method. It's really as though the scientists are shooting shotguns on copies of a crossword puzzle of DNA sequence to break them up, and then reading each chunk one at a time. To piece the original puzzle back, they're looking for overlaps between the fragments of the different copies. To identify the precise DNA sequence in each chunk, the first-generation method is Sanger sequencing. Sanger sequencing works by creating varying lengths of DNA replicates with identifiable ends. We need four things. DNTP, deoxynucleoside triphosphate, the building blocks of DNA. DNA polymerase, the enzyme that chemically bonds DNTPs. And DNA primer, which serves as starting points for DNA synthesis. We add a special ingredient, DDNTP, didioxynucleotide. DDNTP differs from DNTP by having a radioactive tag and a missing end which prohibits DDNTP from further bonding to other DNTPs, terminating a growing DNA chain whenever it is incorporated. Like DNTP, DDNTP comes in four bases, A, T, G, C. Mixing them, we prepare four separate sets of reagents. We add to each test tube a different DDNTP base. Replication stops, and a fragment of random length terminating with that base, for example A, is created. With millions of copies, fragments with different lengths all terminating with that base, say A, are created. Finally, the fragments are analysed by gel electrophoresis, which separates the fragments according to length, and then visualised on X-ray film using autoradiography. Through this, we know the exact location of each base A on the DNA sequence. Repeat with all four DDNTP types, that is T, C and G, and we then get the exact DNA sequence. In 2001, it was estimated to take 2.7 billion USD and 13 years to sequence the human genome. Such cost is prohibitive if personal genetic information is required. A big part of the cost and time comes from cell cloning, electrophoresis, and discrete steps from reaction to identification. Can we avoid these steps and make gene sequencing available to everyone? Welcome to Next Generation Sequencing. Let's discuss two techniques, sequencing by synthesis, SBS, and ion semiconductor sequencing, ion torrent sequencing. In sequencing by synthesis, SBS, DNA replication occurs anchored to a surface, such as beads, called emulsion PCR, instead of free-floating in solution, as per conventional PCR. Instead of using normal DNTP, this technique uses modified DNTP. Just like DDNTP used in Sanger sequencing, modified DDNTP is fluorescence-labeled and has a terminal end that prohibits further binding, but due to protective capping instead of being totally missing called reversible terminators. When modified DNTP is incorporated, laser is shined on the chain and the corresponding fluorescence colour of the modified DNTP, for example A, is green, is emitted and captured on camera. From this point, 
the reversible terminators play a unique role. By uncapping the reversible terminators to reveal the bonding end, binding to another modified DNTP can occur. Thus, with every new cycle of adding modified DNTP, recording the fluorescence and uncapping the reversible terminators, the DNA is sequenced as the DNA is synthesized. By anchoring to a surface and taking the image in real time, SBS reduced the cost of sequencing to between 10 to 100 USD per MB in a matter of hours. Next up, ion semiconductor sequencing. In this technique, emulsion PCR beads are loaded into a well on a microchip, a chip like the one in your smartphone. These chips have an enormous capacity and contains millions of wells that accommodate millions of beads. Interestingly, ion semiconductor sequencing uses normal DNTP. Yes, no modification at all. A DNTP base, say A, is loaded to the well one at a time and binds if it's complementary to the DNA strain. Every time a match occurs, it releases hydrogen ion, after which excesses are washed off and the next DNTP, say T, is loaded. The microchip that the wells are built on is an ion-sensitive layer that acts like a micro-pH meter. When hydrogen ions are released upon successful binding, pH changes and is registered digitally, giving us information on which well, which DNTP, and how many DNTPs are added. By eliminating the need for special nucleotides and achieving real-time identification via pH monitoring instead of fluorescence, Current ion semiconductor sequencing already boasts an impressive possibility between 10 to 50 USD per MB, in a matter of hours and maybe better. We have seen how electronic advancement, which follows Moore's law of doubling efficiencies every 18 months, has revolutionized the way we interact, play, bank, and more. DNA sequencing efficiencies, with its start in 2000 at a cost of 10,000 USD per MB, has over the years surpassed even Moore's law. Perhaps in the future, we can have phone verification locks that recognize your DNA and identify your health risk due to your genome. How do you think gene sequencing can change the world around you? <laughs>